Okay, so hello and welcome to Wednesday's Wellness uh, Question and Answer. If you join me live, I will try and answer your questions live. I will look out for questions and comments on Facebook, but this is taking a long time. There's a lot of delay, so I may not see it. So what I want to talk about today is blood tests. Um, how and specifically have you had a blood test and the doctors told you it's normal that you've gone to them with a problem they said oh it's normal nothing to worry about well the chances are the chances are that there is actually something that is not quite right because i have yet to see anyone's blood test results where everything has actually been healthy and yes that's the problem. The normal does not equal healthy. The ranges that are used on lab reports, and so I'm just going to quickly show you just, you know, this, there's lots of red I've written on this, but basically in the name has been uh, removed there, so you can't see it, and it's all a bit blurry, so you won't be able to read it anyway. But if you've got a lab report and it's got things like uh, ALK, FOS, serum, ALT, serum, potassium, RBC, white blood cell count, and then you'll see your number and then off to the side. So for instance, there's, there's numbers here and then off to the side, there'll be the normal range, okay? And you think, oh, it's in the normal range, that's okay. But unfortunately, these normal ranges, um, I don't know how they were made up, um, probably just from testing a lot of people and seeing what their normal ranges were and say, and ask, did you have any symptoms? Okay, fine, there you go. And they were made up some time ago. Um, and they haven't really been updated. And the problem is there's actually been a lot of science corroborating, like for instance, let's talk, let's talk about bilirubin. Okay, bilirubin is something that's a breakdown product of red blood cells, but it's also actually used as an antioxidant in the blood. Okay, and the normal range is zero to 20. Okay, but here's the thing, if it goes under 8.5 is actually an indicator of too much inflammation in the body and your body is using up all of its bilirubin to basically quell the rusting process in your blood and in your body so actually so while the normal is 0 to 20 if it's actually below 8.5 it means something okay Another big one which I've spoken about before is white blood cell count. The normal is like anything from like 3.5 to 11.5, depending on what day of the week or exactly who you're going with. So this one actually says 3.2 to 10.5. Um, but anything above six is related to increased heart disease and increased all-cause mortality. Another big one, cholesterol. Um, I haven't got the exact figures in front of me. Here you go, so cholesterol, they should be different, different between men and women. And like, for instance, if it goes under a certain level, so the normal range for cholesterol is just given as, what is it given as on this one? Um, is cholesterol, yeah, normal is given basically serum cholesterol from zero to 4.9. And if you're in that normal range, it's okay. But if it actually goes under a certain number, your increase, you don't have an increase in heart disease, but you have a massive increase in all cause mortality. So basically every single other cause of death goes up dramatically when it goes under a certain level. And as you age, it gets worse. So for instance, a 60 year old male, okay, their cholesterol in order to be healthy cholesterol, okay, needs to be um, at least 4.4. So if you're a man over 60 and your cholesterol is under 4.4, your risk for heart disease may be less than it would be at a cholesterol of five. But as it goes under, the more it goes under 4.4, you have such a massive increase of risk of everything else that the heart disease risk is like, well, it doesn't really matter. Um, and for women, it's different. It's actually slightly higher. And the same with LDL cholesterol, low density lipoprotein um, cholesterol, it's, there are different ranges for ages, for age groups and for men and women. Um, and also HDL cholesterol, high density lipoprotein, is basically, they say again, if it goes under a certain amount, okay, you know, there's no, this, this is the safe range, but 
as it goes higher, there's also an increased risk of death because one of the things about HDL is it goes up in response to basically mop up um, basically certain toxic bacteria in your bloodstream. So when you see like, you know, the cholesterol may be normal and fine, LDL cholesterol may be normal and fine, but the HDL is actually above a certain number, it's actually a warning sign that you might have some other problem. Like for instance, a leaky gut where bacteria and food is getting into your bloodstream and into your body that way, and it's allowing bacteria through as well which then in increases LPS, lipopolysaccharides, which basically increases your risk of dying, toxemia, uh, and heart disease and heart problems as well. So with that said, let's talk about a couple of things. So this one patient, basically, as far as he was concerned, it was normal, but there's actually some red on here from the actual printout itself. Um, so there was some things, but it still comes back, satisfactory, no action needed. But um, there's a very high, um, what's called gamma GT, which is uh, a liver enzyme, and it was above the normal range, not just outside of optimal, but outside of the normal range as well. And that is actually um, indicative of possibly an autoimmune condition. And so you look at globulin, um, and again, that was, it's in the normal range, but it was above optimal. And so this person probably has something or something autoimmune wise going on, or maybe their system's not uh, working properly, might be the kidneys a little bit, maybe. There's a few things that it could be. Okay, but first of all, you've got to think autoimmune. So you look at the white blood cells. Yep, the white blood cells are higher than normal, and um, they're out of the optimal ranges in some areas. And what were the ones? And the one that was really, again, it was high, but it says satisfactory, no action needed. Monocytes were above normal, and this is can often be indicative of. Um, well, antioxidant problems, immune problems, um, toxicity is a big one. Um, and toxicity can lead to liver problems, it can lead to um, worse problems with blood sugar and diabetes, which comes back on the blood results over here. And then there's a few other bits and pieces, basically. Um, red blood cells are not right, hematocrits below optimal. Um, there's a few things, but basically it all indicates um, that he needs basically better working kidneys and more antioxidant powers. Um, so I would recommend to this person um, lots of glutathione because glutathione is very powerful antioxidant. Um, it recycles all the antioxidants in the body and it can help with the kidneys. So yeah, there is a huge amount, a huge amount, and it points to certain specific things that this person can do to improve their health and get out of pain as well. And then this lady, she has, um, I'm not going to say actually, um, has some nerve problems. I'm just going to say, lady, nerve problems. And one of the things that we found is, basically, even though it's in the normal range, potassium okay, is below optimal. And something called creatine, even though it's in the normal range, it's well below optimal. And creatine basically means if it's very low, it's usually because a person hasn't got enough muscle, um, not, maybe not getting enough protein in the diet, but certainly not enough muscle, um, need muscles to work, but also low potassium basically means that nerves won't fire and work properly. So this could be the cause of her nerve problems is she needs more potassium and perhaps more protein. And again, something that was low is something called albumin. Albumin is a protein in your blood that carries lots of other stuff. So we know that the red blood cells, hemoglobin carries oxygen uh, pretty much everywhere, um, but, and gases, but what albumin does is it carries things like calcium and other proteins and minerals and things, and that was low. So basically this lady, she's not transporting proteins, probably, probably doesn't have enough protein in her diet, hasn't got enough muscles to support her joints and her muscles, um, and the sodium and the potassium is too low. And, very, very high HDL cholesterol. Um, so basically she possibly has some gut issues that she might not be aware of or something happening in the blood. So further investigation needed. And then just one more, and this is my favorite because um, it's someone I know. And basically someone who was on aspirin um, to thin the blood because of a heart problem and there are a lot of other drugs and medication as well, which are causing other side effects, but I won't go into that. Basically, on aspirin to thin the blood. 
but the aspirin started causing stomach bleeding. So put on a meprazole to decrease the acid in the stomach and decrease the side effects from the aspirin. But the trouble with a meprazole, if you use it for more than a month, you start decreasing the amount of minerals that you absorb. So blood pressure will go up, blood sugar regulation will start getting poorer. And at long term, a meprazole use is related to kidney problems, kidney cancer, heart disease and dementia. So you've got aspirin, which can also increase um, risk of a bleeding stroke, okay, although it can prevent clots, but it's basically put on for blood thinning, then you're on a meprazole and that can lead to a lot of other problems as well. So had a look at this person's blood test results and there's a simple calculation you can do to see how thick a person's blood is. Um, if, you, if they've already got the right parameters in the normal blood count, and sometimes they're all gonna be there and sometimes they're not. And you do need the person's glucose levels as well for this. Now, once you have the glucose, sodium, uh, potassium, and urea, and then the other thing, the other count you can do is, uh, is uh, that, no, that's osmolarity. The other one you can do for viscosity is total protein and hem hematocrit. Once you know these things, you can plug them into equations and you can see how, how watery, how viscous is the blood. Basically, this person's blood was actually already far too thin. So the idea, and there basically wasn't very much blood in the blood, basically. So by putting someone on aspirin that's already got really thin blood, is not going to help them. It's going to make things worse. And especially when they start bleeding and you put them on omeprazole, it's going to cause other problems. So um, I let this person know um, that they should probably talk to their doctor and they should and most likely, and um, the conclusion should be to come off the aspirin so they don't also then have to take the omeprazole, um, and then we can start working on improving the rest of their health and getting off the rest of the drugs that they're having side effects to because they're all blood sugar and blood pressure related. So if you have had a blood test and you've been told that it's normal, and you would like a second opinion from someone that actually has looked at all the literature um, and the ranges and has done some training in all of this, as opposed to just looking at the numbers and saying, oh yeah, that's normal according to that. Um, then we do, I do offer that service. So um, thank you very much for watching. I do hope that you found today fascinating and useful. Um, I know I love all of this stuff um, and I wish you all a fantastic day ahead and uh, yeah i will speak next week and remember if you have any questions or queries reach out email and talk to me i am here to help okay be well and as ever live long and prosper <laughs>